Whenever you're ready. Okay. What is more important in an athlete, a fixed mindset or a growth mindset? The brain is responsible for a good portion of an athlete's success. A competitor's outlook is based upon two simple ideas, a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. A fixed mindset is when one relies on natural talents, so they are afraid to go above their ability level. A growth mindset is when one stretches their ability, abilities by allowing failure to drive them forward. Some examples of how the two different mindsets play out in a certain situation are fixed, I can't do this, growth, I can try a different strategy, fixed, this work is good enough, growth, is this really my best work, and fixed, this is too hard, growth, this may take some time and effort. Between the two, it is more important for an athlete to develop a growth mindset in order to reach higher levels of success so they can outperform their peers. Without it, they won't reach their highest potential because they will, they will rely on natural talent so they won't work as hard. A study that was implemented on a group of college soccer athletes found the difference between the two mindsets within the sport. When a player believed that effort helped improve their performance, they outperformed their peers who believed their natural abilities would take them far. When a player believed that effort is prized over skill, they ended up having a higher level season. This study implemented that when a player can develop and keep a growth mindset, they will outperform their peers who possess a fixed mindset. Although not all athletes have a perfect mindset, Serena Williams is a prime example of going from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. In an interview, she explained that when she thought about winning to meet to match Steffi Graf's record of 22 slams, she thought about how she had to win each game in order to win it all. She further explained that she lost doing that. So she switched her mindset to only think about the game that was in front of her. When Williams switched her mindset, using a growth mindset to realize that she was only going to think about the game in front of her, she ended up getting to 22 and winning it all without even realizing it. When a competitor can identify their fixed mindset mistakes and turn them into a growth mindset, they succeed. Another athlete who embodies the growth mindset is Michael Jordan. Jordan wasn't always a star basketball player. He was cut from his high school's varsity team, didn't get recruited for his top college team, and was passed up in the first two picks of the NBA draft. With all these failures, Michael used a growth mindset in order to see these defeats as ways to grow. Michael Jordan ended up succeeding because he trained his brain to see these failures as room for improvement. He said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and miss, and that is why I succeed. Furthermore, Bethany Hamilton is another athlete who shows the growth, who shows the success of a growth mindset. After losing her arm in a shark attack at the age of 13, she didn't give up on her passion for surfing. She was able to go on and beat the world's number one surfer, Tyler Wright. She used her lost arm as a way to motivate herself to win. She wasn't set back because she was at a disadvantage. Instead, she took what she had and ran with it. And this clearly shows how a growth mindset allowed her to go against the odds. She said, I learned life is a lot like surfing. When you get caught in the impact zone, you need to get right back up because you never know what's over the next wave. And if you have faith, anything is possible, anything at all. In addition to his previous competitors, Babe Ruth is yet another great example of improving his thoughts. Ruth is a well-known baseball legend, but he had failures before holding the third highest home run record. His failures included holding the highest number of strikeouts at one point. Babe oversaw his failures and used a growth mindset to succeed. He said, every strike brings me closer to the next home run. Having a growth mindset isn't limited to an individual's success in sports. It also impacts a player's outside life. 19-year-old Diane Santos is a young mother and high school dropout. She entered a sports program called One Win Leads to Another, and she allowed her failures in the past push her to accomplish life goals because of the impact sports had on her. She ended up graduating high school and getting a full-time job thanks to sports. Going from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset is also seen through associations in sports. Both Serena Williams and Victoria Azarenka spoke out about losing their rank after having time off for children, an injury, or an illness. The Women's Tennis Association changed the rules and announced that a player's rank could be frozen after having time off for children, an injury, or an illness. And they also allowed women to wear leggings or compression shorts under the skirt to help manage with blood clots after birth. 
The Women's Tennis Association used to grind growth mindset to see the failure within their system and change for the better. While many athletes have a growth mindset, it is important to understand how to coach those who don't so we can switch their thought process. Coaches need to avoid praising players for natural talent and instead promote failure for development. They need to give honest and constructive feedback so a player can learn from their failures. And they need to help a player identify what they want to improve on. And then at the end of the season, they need to reflect with the player on what they did succeed and what they can do more for next season. Coaches and parents can help lead a player into the right growth mindset. Not everyone is able to naturally apply a growth mindset into their life, so it is important to learn tips on how to change your thought process. You need to acknowledge and embrace imperfections, be your own cheerleader, view challenges as opportunities, emphasize growth over speed, place effort before talent, and most importantly, use the word yet. So for example, instead of saying, I can't hit a baseball, you need to say, I can't hit a baseball yet, showing that you are progressing towards a goal. But wait, what you might not know or understand is that you, a fixed mindset cannot be overlooked. In order to have the strongest mind, the two mindsets need to work together as a dynamic duo. A fixed and a growth mindset work together because sometimes for certain situations, you need to pick one over the other. For example, if learning something new is your goal, you need to pick a growth mindset. But if taking care of certain responsibilities is your goal, you have to use a fixed mindset. So in conclusion, yes, a growth mindset is more important in the long run for most athletes, but using both mindsets adjusting according to the situation allows an individual to tap into their full functionality. Huge, I'll, I'll add a big soundtrack in there. Like, make it sound like your style. There's been so few people that think. Uh, <clears throat> how did your research question evolve as you move through the research research process? Well, when I was, when we were given the materials and we read through all of them, I was kind of looking. Nothing really stood out to me, and so I thought I was going to do something about women in sports because like there was a lot of stuff about like the USA gymnastic girls or like Serena Williams, I thought I would maybe go like veer towards that view on it. But then I realized that's kind of a big topic. Like it's hard to like narrow it down and it might be very controversial. So like then I don't know how this came up, but I was just researching stuff about sports and I thought about, well, like do you think the mind is more important in an athlete or the body? Like mind being, oh, I need to strategize or the body being me, athleticism. And so I was trying to research that, but then I wasn't getting enough like educational sources on exactly that. I think it was a little too broad. But as I was reading through an article, I found something about a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. And at the time I didn't know what that meant. And so I did some more research on that. And that's when I knew I wanted to pick that because it was like narrowed and there was a lot of research on it. And so originally I thought I was going to do something about women in sports. Then I went from the mind to the body and then I got narrowed down to a fixed or growth mindset. All right. Thank you. Um, what are the implications of your findings to your community? Well, I think that in the community, in the community, like if you were to read a book, like an article or just like look up stuff on the internet, all that would be spit out to you is about how like good a growth mindset is. Like they would just say, oh, you need how to develop a growth mindset, how to keep a growth mindset, like how to put a growth mindset into your life. Like nothing, everything downgrades a fixed mindset. And so I think the community needs to understand that you have to use both. Like I feel like that is not brought up like anywhere. And I think that needs that's something that needs to be understood because sometimes you need to use a fixed mindset to take care of certain responsibilities. But yes, a growth mindset is going to be better in the long run. So I guess just... Like, I think the community needs to understand that a fixed mindset can't be totally forgotten about, and then both of them need to work together to have the best mindset. Okay, thank you. Another round of applause, huge round of applause and stuff.